Uh, welcome back to Talk Radio. In the studio, Mr. Van Connor. How you doing, Van? Not bad, Jamie. How goes it, sir? Very good indeed. Now, you're here. You're going to stick around and talk about films that made us uh, a bit later on. Uh, don't forget, we want to know what the film that changed your life is. Uh, tweet me at Talk Radio uh, right now. Uh, but we're here to talk about uh, a story that... It's kind of died down now, but I'm really keen on digging deep a little, uh, d- digging a little bit deeper into it. It's, this, it's Blue Story. So it's the film that, that that View Cinemas and Showcase Cinemas banned because of uh, the violence that took place in the cinemas. When was it? it? Must have been two weeks ago or one week ago? About ten days ago. Ten now. days Wasn't ago. It last Friday night, last Saturday night. So right before we get into the, the, what actually happened, what's the film like? I mean, I'll be really honest, I wasn't a fan of it. It's fine, but... but it's what very... happens in it? It's... OK, it's 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 two school friends. Uh, one lives in Lewisham but goes to school in Peckham and apparently this, this causes a sort of... Uh, uh, a, a, a gangland-style divide between sort of, you know, two different boroughs and the, 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 the okay. war, the culture war that erupts between them. It, you've seen this So before, it's kind of Jamie. Top Boy-style stuff? Uh, top Boy, adulthood, adulthood, whatever the third one was called. Yeah. Uh, so, kind of thing. is it is it particularly violent? It has its moments, like all these films do. Put it this way: we genuinely would not be talking about this movie if this hadn't happened. Well, I didn't even review it. I didn't even go and see it because it was be kind of like question. it was. It was one of those ones where it was a busy week, and mm. I looked at it and I thought. Yeah, I know exactly what that film. Was exactly, be. that was that was my thing as well. My thing was I really don't need to see this. So then, when this story broke. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, everyone kind of got in touch with me saying, oh, can you talk about this? Can you write about this for the paper? Can you come on Talk Radio? I think Mike Graham asked me to come on, or Eamon asked me to come on. I was like, I haven't seen it, mate. I no. remember you because you got in touch with me. I got, I, so I asked you if you'd seen it, yeah. and, and like, there's the, like the film, the film critics WhatsApp was mm. buzzing, and everyone was like, uh, "No, I didn't bother seeing." Well, it. I went out and saw it after that because I, I got asked, like, I got asked by you, and then I got asked uh, again about an hour later to do that night. I thought, you know what, if this is going to keep happening, I'm Let's just going to go, and, go and see it. But you so managed I, to find somewhere that was playing. it, I did see it, um, and I was, say, was it was it was it violent? Did you wear a, did you wear a flak vest? I was mostly bored during it, and right. I I genuinely felt. Sorry, I was so bored during it because I've seen this a thousand... You've seen this a thousand times. Yeah. Um, the, the central gimmick of it is that the director of it, uh, Ratman, who uh, did the, the the three YouTube shorts, I think Shiro's Story, I think they're called collectively, um, he pops up in the film to sort of punctuate the sort of chapter marks with right. this with, with this sort of rap poetry. And I kept thinking of Dave Chappelle in Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> you know, I said, hey, hey, that one, that bit. Okay, yeah, right. I kept thinking of that bit, only it okay. wasn't quite as fun. So... Uh, so the film came out, It, I guess it's a little bit triggering to kind of London gangs. Would it be seen as that? Is it? Is it? Did it, did it in any way strike you as something that would incite violence? No more than any Noel Clarke movie did, right. to be really honest. And also interesting that it didn't affect anyone in London. It apparently just affected people in Birmingham. Right. Although they did claim they had 25 incidents right. in so, 16 cinemas. Yeah, so this is what I want to talk to you about. Because... Mm. Who, who's, whose film is it? Do we know what distributor is? Or oh, it's Paramount. It's Paramount. It's Paramount, right, yeah. okay. Paramount don't have a lot of films out. You know, they're, Not they're, generally. Their yeah. slate is, is, is pretty thin over the year. And it I is. know the people at Paramount, so I'm not going to cast any aspersions over, over no, anything like that. But for a film that was generating no press whatsoever, uh-huh. that no one was talking about, that mm-hmm. no one was reviewing, mm-hmm. all of a sudden it became... The, the film that everybody was talking about and everybody had to go and see. Now, I'm, I'm obviously not suggesting that that is is that the 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 incident was was in any way kind of like fabricated. Or oh, of course not. But no. but certainly there there has been a PR machine that has been call me a cynic that has certainly used uh, this to its advantage. It has worked to its advantage. Now put it this way: on Monday morning, this this previous week, on Monday morning, Ratman himself went on Twitter and said, "You know, we lost so you know X percent of our screens. We still ranked number three in the box office top ten. Mm-hmm. We made uh, one point, I think it was one point three or one point eight. Uh, I forget. I think it might be one point three. One point three million quid. Now you know the UK box office the same as I do. One point three million quid is a hell of a haul. Yeah, yeah. The UK box office. It yeah. really, a Marvel movie can open and make at best nine million quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's a Marvel movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that's the heavy. That's the gold standard of blockbusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make that amount of money for a film like that. I mean, Noel Clark literally dreams of, of one of his movies making that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's unheard of. And you have to believe that a good chunk of that was, let's go in droves... Let's go and find as, out what's and, what. ...and see what the fuss was. Because, like you say, the story was that there were there were 20-odd incidences of violence. Yeah. And yet, but yet when the press 
pressed the, the mm. cinema chains to come up with any examples or, or any more details on any of that, they couldn't. Now, this was the interesting thing, because I tried looking it up. I tried looking into uh, what these other incidents were, because it was interesting that they weren't referred to as, as incidents of violence. They were referred to as serious incidents and nothing else. What does that mean? Th that's it, isn't it? Serious incidents could be... We've someone all stole popcorn? I don't know. Could be someone fell down the stairs. What's a serious incident? It's very, you know, very strange. Can, did someone tell someone to shut up and they complained to security? Is that what happened? Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a little bit odd, and I think in the in this day and age we're all slightly cynical about these kind of things. Well, this has been going on for decades. We this is how Spike Lee's career started. Yeah, remember when uh, in the nineties, "Do the Right Thing" came out and there were complaints that you can't have this film in cinema; it's going to incite people to violence. And then you know, uh, the late nineties when Columbine happened, we blamed the movies, we blamed the video games, we blamed Marilyn Manson and Eminem. Yeah. You know, uh, Buffy got the blame for, for things. It was, it was insane. I, just think, I think we're a little bit wiser than that. It's like, you know, f for for all the press's um, attempts to create, to drum up some furore, Joker passed by with exactly. absolutely no, you know, we just spoke to Todd Phillips about it. <laughs> the, when we saw him at the Q&A before, before it came out, he was panicking. He was on the, they, him, and, him and Joaquin were on the ropes, kind of having to basically apologise for a movie that no one hardly had ever seen. Mm. And just because it, it dealt with a lone wolf with mental health issues, uh, people thought that all of these lone, all, all, anyone with mental health issues was all of a sudden to dress themselves up as a clown and start attacking people <laughs> in cinemas. And it just didn't happen. Happen. Makes you wonder what happened if they released Fight Club today, doesn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> well, now I just want to watch Fight Club.